Hi everyone, it's Tammy Brown, your Pampers Chef Consultant, coming to you today. And I am going to share with you our cast iron Dutch oven. Now this is enamel coated. It has a lid on it and it has little specks on it, little ridges should I say, which helps self-baste whatever you're making in it. So today I'm going to do a pork roast in it. And I'm just gonna sear it. I don't know if I'll do the whole video while I'm searing it or not, but always go about 12 inches above your meat when you're salt and peppering it. Especially salt, because you want it to get more even. When you're doing a roast like this and you're gonna sear, you want to season all four sides of it. Here's our friendly tongs, love these things. Um, my lighting's a little off today. I don't know what's going on with it, but we've got to deal with it. And the bird's back there jabbering with us too. The average home cook does not use as much salt as you're supposed to on meat. And if you did, you would have more restaurant quality flavored meat. So that is just another tip I wanted to give you today. And I'm just using my tongs too. I'm going to have to use them anyways to flip it in this cast iron skillet. So why not use them when I'm doing it this way so I don't get my hands all dirty also. Sorry, my dogs are going to bark even. This is just a normal day at my house when I'm home by myself with the dogs. They just choose to always talk to everybody. So we salt and pepper it all four sides. Same thing when you're gonna sear. You sear all four sides of it. Now while this is searing, or getting hot, and most of your chefs will tell you, you want your cast iron screaming hot. That means like really hot, guys. They're not playing games when they say they want it screaming hot. So that's all I'm doing right now is getting my cast iron nice and hot. I personally, today, I'm going to add a little olive oil. And when I put my olive oil in there, I'm going to be able to see how hot my cast iron is. So we're going to let that get a little bit hotter before I go into searing. I'm going to show you our salt and pepper shakers. I love these things. You can use these to grind up your own spice, too. And you can make them real fine or real thick. Big chunks. So... I love those things. They'll stay out at my table all the time because we use them all the time when we're cooking. So now I can see my oil is getting hot. My cast iron is getting nice and hot. And just the liquid from my tongs just made that really cool noise. So that shows me that it is time to start searing my roast. And you'll know when you're doing searing, you want, what you're doing when you're searing is you're locking in the moisture from the meat. So by doing that, you're gonna have a softer, juicier meat when you cook it. So you do try to sear on all sides so it locks it in really good. And you really can't over sear unless you're burning, but you want it to get a really cool dark color when you're searing. And then have your oven ready to put it in when it's done, which that's what I'm turning mine on. And then I'm going to slow cook it for the rest of the day. Now, you can see a little bit of smoke coming up, and that's normal when you're stirring. So now I'm going to flip it to the other side. Just because I'm on video, it's kind of hard for me to see how much I've seared. So as I flip it. Let the other side start searing, and normally you sear one side until you got it as dark as you want it. Sear the other side and keep flipping like that. You don't normally try to flip it more than once or sear it more than once on each side. To me, I was always raised with searing your roast before you cook it. Now, you don't have to do this, but it does lock in the flavor really good. And as you can tell, I'm on a glass top stove, and there is some of the red showing up. Just to let you know, 75% of the burner has to be covered by your cookware. If it's not 75% of the burner, then you need to drop down and use your smaller burner for it. It's 
just another tip I'll give you for cooking today. Now going to the other side. And when you sear the sides that actually have all the fat on them, that's going to release the fat into your Dutch oven. So as it's cooking, it's going to be adding more flavor to your pork also. So that's another way to do it. Now, if you didn't have time to de this and you wanted this to get done quickly, that's when I move over to my quick cooker. I can still sear it in my quick cooker, quick cooker, and then I can put it on pressure cook and cook it, and it'll be done even if it was frozen when I started it. So that's when I use my pressure cooker. And the quick cooker, you'll see some videos of me doing different things in there. It just depends on how I want to cook that night. If I'm using my quick cooker, if I'm using my cast iron, if I'm using my rock cross with the slow cooker stand. A lot of times it just depends on what I'm cooking or how I want to do it that day. How much I want to babysit my meal for the day. And now remember, if you've got your cast iron screaming hot, you're going to see the steam coming off of it like this. And always use something, whether it's our baby mint, baby shark is what we call it in my house, or if you're using your oven mitts to do this, so it just depends, but always use something. I would not advise to be using your microwave grips because they're a little too thin and you don't want to burn your stuff when doing this. So now you can see that it's starting to sear on, or it on the side. And don't keep your tongs in there because they're going to get hot to the touch. Now when I'm done searing this, and if I feel it needs a little more oil, I'm going to add oil to my pan. So I can get my sear exactly the way I want it before I put this in the oven. And if you get a little bit stuck on the bottom, add a little oil, add a little water, add a little beef stock, chicken stock, and take that off before you put it in the oven. That's just going to add more flavor to your food. I don't know if you can see, but this is really starting to sear perfectly. So I just wanted to give you a little heads up on how to do it with our cast iron. Remember when I put it in the oven though, it is going to baste itself with these little things on the top. So I love that idea. So I hope you learned just a little bit from me today with our cast iron enamel Dutch oven. And we do have a few more pieces out of these also. I'll have to show you those at another video. You have a great day, and I hope you enjoy your dinner tonight.